Blog Talk Radio. Namaste, people of infinite consciousness. Welcome to Nature of Reality Radio on a special Tuesday show. This is your host, Andrew Fisher, broadcasting normally Wednesdays from the suburbs of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to expose the true and false nature of reality for what it is and what it isn't. From 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern, we will doing, be doing a 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern show on Tuesday, January 19th, 2016, because my guest, Bernard Gunther, was not able to do a Wednesday show. And I also do have another show anyway with uh, Jordan Maxwell tomorrow from 6 to 7 p.m. to Make sure I give him a full two hours. Already did an hour with him last week. But Bernard Gunther on the show today. Somebody recommended um, recommended Bernard Gunther to me. I don't remember who. It's interesting. Some of my guests in the past have said, how did you hear about me? And I tell them some person, one of my listeners, my fans, told me about you, but I don't remember who. And I kind of feel bad because I want to give credit to the people who recommend my guests. But anyway... Um, Bernard Gunther grew up in Munich, Germany. He moved to California in 1994 to study drums and percussion, and his exploration into rhythm and music became a journey of self-discovery and healing, which led him to bodywork and the healing arts. He um, is very emotionally sensitive, and uh, he battled depression throughout a lot of his life, his early life. He uh, faced shadow and fears. His personal healing process also inspired him to explore the mysteries and hidden knowledge surrounding our planet and humanity's origins, questioning the roots of what constitutes reality and how social and spiritual conditioning impacts upon our collective and individual search of truth, fulfillment, and happiness in all aspects of life. His blog, uh, Piercing the Veil of Reality, which can be found at veilofreality.com, V-E-I-L-O-F-R-E-A-L-I-T-Y.com, Veil of Reality, is a wide-ranging uh, collection of essays, films, and interviews, ranging from spiritualism, sh- shamanism, psychology, self-work, esotericism, history, the paranormal, and hyper-dimensional reality. <laughs> He's my kind of guy. I'm really into that stuff, too. Um, he also has another site. I forgot. Um, I never knew about it until a couple of hours ago, as a matter of fact. Uh, feels so stupid. Um, Bernard Gunther. Dot com, I believe is the other site. Um, when I see him in the queue, I'll let him uh, clarify that. I forgot to put it here in the uh, in the bio of the uh, of the video, but that's another website. And uh, there's uh, some guests in the chat. Glad to see you there. Uh, and uh, before we get Bernard on, well, I can't get him on yet because he's not even in the queue. But um, before he comes on, we will first uh, hmm, uh, hang on a second, folks. I need to make sure everything is okay because my uh, mouse seems to be. Um, Having some problems. Hopefully the uh okay, it's fine now. It's it froze for a second. But anyway, I'm back to the screen and first, <clears throat> as usual, we're gonna start with the news courtesy of Alex Jones and Company at InfoWars. Uh first um article. High level CIA source says the elite are Satanists. Well, uh that's preaching to the choir for a lot of people, but um for people that listen to InfoWars that are very political, they don't necessarily, whenever they talk about politics, don't always necessarily get into the Satanism that's involved with the um, powers that be, the powers that should not be, whatever you want to call them, that control the all the national governments on planet Earth to some degree. And uh, the CIA is um, one of their t- is more powerful than the federal st- uh, government for all intents and purposes. Well, it's just part of the federal government, but uh, more powerful than the executive, judicial, and um, Congress combined. It does a lot of... Uh, Despicable stuff behind the scenes. George Bush um, was the uh, CIA director, and he did a lot of controlling behind the scenes. And um, I remember reading Tragedy and Hope uh, recently, read the whole book, all 1,300 or so pages of it. And um, Alan Dulles, one of the Dulles brothers, infamous Dulles brothers, uh, CIA um, head, was mentioned numerous times in the book to make it clear that the CIA has a lot of affair and a lot of, um, say, in global affairs. And uh, now this whistleblower or whatever, public informant, whatever you want to call him, there's a difference between whistleblower and full public informant. Talk to Douglas Dietrich to learn the difference there. Um, he claims he's a public informant. <clears throat> and uh, this guy says, leader Satanist, meaning that they love to sacrifice children, worship by fire and brimstone, and uh, call in reptilians, archons, other malevolent entities into our reality at their satanic circles. And, uh, well, the CIA definitely has some Satan. Oh, I say some, a lot of Satanism in it. The NSA probably is even worse because the NSA, you could say, is the boss of the CIA. But enough of that. Moving on to the next article. Ooh, I don't have time to get into this, but I'd love to if I could. It says new poison found in water it was a front page headline I saw when it um on the uh, video screenshots that flash across the screen when you first log on to InfoWars just now. So I don't know what that new poison is, but we all know they're poisoning us with the fluoride and a lot of prescription drugs can be found in the in the water. And uh, I remember this guy in an uh, InfoWars interview in the not-too-distant uh, past 
maybe a year and a half ago, he said that he took some water out of a tap in like the middle of center city, Philadelphia or something to that effect. And, and a lot of gunk was found in the water, disgusting brownish gunk that, um, came from filtering it out, taking out all the water and everything. And, and I actually drank out of the Philadelphia taps a couple times when I was down there. I didn't like Wanu because, uh, that's fluoridated and got all that gunk in it when I was down there for some rallies in the past. But I, I live in a township that's um that takes water purification very seriously. Make sure that there's no fluoride or as many harmful uh, harmless excuse me chemicals in the water where I live, so I'm lucky compared to a lot of people. Don't really necessarily have to filter my water. I do still, but the um can still probably drink my township water easily without filtering and wouldn't have any problems, luckily, because my local government is somewhat benevolent. Well, I say somewhat. Well, I say somewhat because every government realizes they're breaking the law at some level or another or doesn't realize, but they do realize and they don't do anything about it. And, um, well, they just go with the flow, and then when they hear that they're breaking the law, they will just not believe that they've been breaking the law that time and continue to go along to get along. All right, but anyway, next article. French death ro- French deaths rise to highest level since World War II. So why are people dying in France? Is it suicide, homicide? Is it the refugee crisis? The refugees coming to France and uh, and um, killing people and raping people? Like, well, all the more reason why it's not a bad idea to secure the borders and do a vetting process on anyone that wants to come into the country. Immigration has, throughout the course of history, been viewed as a privilege and not a right because the people of a country do have every right to um, do some sort of a vetting process or anyone or anything that crosses the border of that nation. Although, I don't get me wrong, I have said before, it would be nice if we could all just get along and it would be possible to not secure the borders and let everybody cross borders without having to go through uh, any sort of a government um, process, any sort of background check or paperwork filing, and people that sail into for, uh, foreign nations um, by boat wouldn't have to go through like an Ellis Island type procedure to do that. But, but you know what? In this matrix where not all borders are created equal, it, it's not a bad idea to vet people at the border. So let's make sure that that um, doesn't become a problem with France or anywhere else. All right, here's another water a water article. I'm just going to skip over that. Uh, all right, next article. This is about refugees again. Our refugees coming into countries. These refugees armed with pepper spray and a knife attacked journalists. You know, a lot of these refugees have been um, brainwashed because the U.S. government, which controls ISIS and Al-Qaeda, Took, puts ISIS and Al-Qaeda into other countries and says, we need to save that country because it's being invaded by ISIS and Al-Qaeda, and then they, we send in our troops to allegedly save the country when it's all a scam. We just do it to further the New World Order Empire, which uses America as the Roman Empire of the modern era, and take over the countries using uh, the under the guise of protecting everyone from Al-Qaeda and ISIS, when ISIL, whatever you want to call it, when we're the ones who put it in, and now we're letting these um, Muslims that have been brainwashed by all the ISIS and Al Qaeda invasions in those Middle East countries come to other nations as refugees, and they have been so badly affected and badly tormented that they're hurting people. And the powers that be do want to create a world war between Christians and Muslims to some degree. And I believe 33rd degree Mason Albert Pike did say something about the Third World War um, being some sort of a war in the, it going on in the Middle East, having to do with a battle between Christians and Muslims. Well, I do subscribe to the idea that all religions are maybe not necessarily Illuminati creations, but at the very least, major Illuminati manipulations to brainwash people and suppress consciousness. So I wouldn't take any religion, but hey, the last thing we need is for religions to be w- w- people warring with each other. If if you want to take up a religion, make sure that you follow the moral code aspects of the religion and not uh, not use it as an excuse to go after people who don't follow your religion. All right, enough of that. And one last article. <clears throat> Desperate, failing McDonald's to offer chocolate-covered fries. <laughs> uh, what will they try next? Their whole um, all-day breakfast menu has turned out to be a disaster. People are realizing McDonald's, their, their burgers aren't even beef, and uh, there's synthetic plastic in the chicken nuggets and uh, uh, all sorts of other things. Uh, McDonald's, I used to work for Wendy's and Burger King, and I used to eat a lot of that food. Well, I will never, ever, ever eat McDonald's, Wendy's, or Burger King unless I absolutely have to for my own survival. I've given up fast food and probably giving out, going out to restaurants too. Uh, Whole Foods is my store to shop at and my local um, garden right by my house too. But enough of that. Let's uh, see if Bernard Gunther's in the queue. Uh, I have two people in the queue. They both seem to have come on the same time. Uh, I believe that this number is um, Bernard's. 
Um, area code three one zero. Is this Bernard Gunther? Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah. How you doing? Good. Glad to have you. Uh, you on the air. Um, this other caller here. It's just one of those one 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 numbers. I will be taking calls. Any people that are in the queue in uh, an hour and five minutes? Just want to get that out uh, since I have you on right now. Call on number six four six four seven eight four seven four seven. I'll start taking questions if anybody wants them in an hour and five minutes from now. But uh, Bernard Gunther, I. Uh, said uh, before you came on that I feel kind of stupid because I listed your um, website veilofreality.com but I forgot to um, list your other site bernardgunther.com um, so why don't you um, tell us, Start. a lot of people do this at the end of the shows but I'll start off at the beginning of this show tell us about what each of your websites do and uh, tell us how people can find you well uh, my blog is veilofreality.com and that's a collection of all my writings over the past over 10 years ranging from various topics you know also just you know the hidden political agenda to secret government and and all of that to uh, up to the UFO phenomena hyperdimensional realities and anything in between psychology history you know it's just also it's kind of also mirrors my own journey and digging down the rabbit hole and just uh, writing about my findings and combining it with my own uh, experiences. And it also includes some films I've made with a friend based on my writings, uh, three films. One is the UFO documentary, UFOs, Aliens and the Question of Contact. And the other one, Love, Reality in a Time of Transition, and a shorter video called Know Thyself about uh, you know self-work and esoteric work in order to be the change, so to speak, you want to see in the world. And my personal website, which is my name dot com, bernhardgunther dot com, is uh, about my healing work. I do. I'm a body worker. I work uh, energy work on body worker, uh, which I've been doing for my 15 years now. I have my private practice, and um, so I help level uh, people on that level, getting into their bodies and just processing, helping them, you know, in their own process. And I also offer. Skype sessions or coaching sessions, so to speak, uh, you know, over Skype or also in person to explore some other things and mostly um, issues people are dealing with which they cannot really share with anybody else or go to somebody else relating to, um, you know, the struggles in the path of, towards the path of awakening, hyperdimensional interference, psychic attacks, entity attachments and whatnot. So, yeah, those are the two websites, basically, and my work. Thanks. And uh says you had some exploration into rhythm and music, and that led to a journey of self-discovery and healing, which in turn led to body work and the healing arts. Uh, I guess we'll start off with music and, and rhythm. So, first of all, a couple things about, well, what is music? It's that universal harmony that exists in nature, which is also found in mathematics and astronomy. At least that's what Pythagoras said, which many claim was the father of music. And uh, some people would disagree with the whole astronomy thing because they assert, well, there can't be music in astronomy because it's outer space. It's, for all intents and purposes, a vacuum, and sound cannot travel in a vacuum. But people say, no, that's not what, whether or not music needs a medium to travel through it does not have anything to do with whether or not it's music. So uh, maybe people need a better understanding of what music is and uh, whether it can, there is a, some sort of musical harmony in astronomy that has nothing to do with space being a vacuum. So why don't you tell us what music did for you and why um, music is such a a key thing in in humanity's history? Well, for me, I never approached it that from the theoretic perspective, you know, in the sense of math and you know, but rhythm is basically math, right? But what I've noticed, like me, is growing up, I could never fit in really. Like I was always more or less a loner and couldn't fit in with other people, and you know, and. Um, so music, I found early on, just gave me a refugee to really deal with my very sen- uh, you know, sensitive emotional nature, to kind of just like, you know, uh, I could relate to certain rhythms, music frequencies, even lyrics, and kind of like, you know, that dance along to it or just listening to it helped me to process uh, certain emotions and certain, you know, thing, uh, states of being or emotions I was going through, which, you know, we're not taught in school anything, how to deal with our emotional life and the psychology of it. So naturally, I was just, you know, listening to music. And then I, through a mutual friend, I just started playing drums. And that really opened up, 
I don't know, it's almost hard to put into words, but it really connected me to something deeper or bigger than life it's, itself. It's like, it's you know, later on I actually realized it became a spiritual practice, right? In a sense, like it really put me into a very meditative state, into a zone, and, and you know, I started, you know, I started uh, drumming late in my life, actually at the age of 19, and then dropped out of the University of Munich at the age of 22, and moved to Los Angeles to study drums and percussion to really immerse myself in it, and played literally like six to eight hours a day, you know, when I went to drum school, and then played in bands here, and just, that was my life, just drumming, 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 and, you know, on some level wanting to pursue a music car- musical career, but really what it was in the end of the day, it was it became, like I said, my spiritual practice. It helped me to process emotions and just express myself creatively through rhythm. And, you know, somehow it even rewired my brain with the whole independent limb movement. And, you know, that kind of led me then to, like, somehow, you know, through synchronicities and, you know, meeting other people. My roommate um, back then was a body worker and yoga uh, teacher, and he introduced me to to those healing modalities and I found another talent, and giving body work, like working on, on, on a body with, with body work techniques, is very much related to drumming for me. In a sense, it's all about rhythm. You know, you're tuning into the rhythm of the body, you know, and uh, also with music, you know, it ties into sound healing and how frequencies affect the body and, and, and the mind. So it all, like, you know, it, you know, there's a saying like you can only connect the dots looking back, and that's how I see, you know, in my path how everything is really related and connected to each other. But in the present, and it may not make sense in a sense, right? Because I came to the U.S. with the intention, like, yeah, I want to be a musician. I'm going to tour, make albums, and I did that for a while. But I never, quote unquote, planned on actually becoming a body worker or doing the work I'm doing now with my writings and videos and ex- exploring all these topics. But essentially, you know, what drumming helped me as well, just dealing, helped me dealing with my suffering because I simply could not fit in. I could not relate to other people and just the usual quote-unquote matrix goals of just, you know, making money, having a family or whatever, and go on vacation here and there and just entertain yourself throughout and just quote-unquote have fun. I just you know, it just didn't work for me. And then my own suffering literally forced me on some level to really dig deeper down the rabbit hole and question the world, question reality, question culture, society, you know, partly suffering, partly also curiosity. I just always knew there must be more out there than what we've been told and taught. And then, you know, the right book comes at the right time, you know, the teacher appears at the right time, and then one thing leads to the other. And, you know, it's been quite a journey since then. Thank you. And another um, journey that you went through, being emotionally sensitive and battling depression throughout your early life and going through what those in the metaphysics and spirituality communities refer to as the dark night of the soul facing your shadow and fears. It's interesting. I recently read an article on N5D.com, um, a really long article compared to a lot of articles that get posted there about spirituality and depression. I mean, that seems like um, two things that would not mix because if you're going through depression, then you, many would assert you're going through the biggest hindrance towards attaining spiritual enlightenment. But many who believe everything happens for a reason, many who believe, well, everything does happen for a reason, but a lot who really stick to that ideology would assert that if you go through depression, then you probably um, never would have become as spiritual as you were if you hadn't gone through depression. Well, that's for all the spiritual people that did go through depression at some point, and you would be one of them. So I guess you might as well tell us about your experience there. And for all those people that are going through the dark night of the soul, do you have any general advice for them? Um, Well, I've... You know, just to speak out of my own experience, it's like there have been several dark nights of the souls. It's kind of like a spiral out, you know what I mean? It's like an up up and down, up and down as you reach higher levels of being. And then, you know, in the end, it's, it's a process of disillusionment. You know, the old self, the conditioned self, we've all we've been told and taught needs literally to die. It's, it's the uh, archetypal or esoteric meaning of the rebirth or the true meaning of the second birth, right? And... Um, <clears throat> shadow work also in Jungian terms uh, making the darkness conscious is very crucial in the past and with regard to depression I mean when I first came into the US uh, in my early 20s and playing drums but you know I just 
when the depressions kicked in and I was I was suffering I was also you know like making hardly any money I had a day job just sustaining myself barely and I remember like I, I had days I woke up in the morning just in fetal position crying and just you know I had suicidal thoughts and all of that not not to the extent that I ever attempted suicide but it was it was pretty severe you know um i but also I never went to like you know at that at that age thought that I have like anything is wrong with me in a sense I just know fell deep inside that you know there's just that this is actually part of the process and I think that's that's important to understand for anyone who's going through that especially in this day and age in society and the so-called healthcare system you know is always is giving us um, antidepressants or labeling us with all kinds of uh, <clears throat> psychological issues which we actually do not own or not uh, really you know it's, there's nothing wrong with it in a sense in a sense it's actually a natural reaction you know it's almost a, a cry of the soul of spirit begging for attention and it's a natural reaction to adjusting to a society that is completely disconnected from nature and spirit you know where literally um, pathological values have become normalized and you know and uh, you know there's this famous quote which I have used many times from Krishnamurti and it says uh, it's no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society you know and that's what we see like people and I see it even with my clients on a daily basis when I go out in the streets or to the city how people you know are so engaged in this red, red race of trying to find happiness, fulfillment, and whatever, in matrix terms, and they are just building more and more armor, you know, suppressing what, how they really feel, how they really think, and then essentially that, uh, you know, that suppression also, you know, eventually manifests in depression or even illness and sickness and cancer, right? Because it's just not aligned with who we truly are. So depression, I feel, is actually very important and Believe it or not, I feel positive a stepping point in one's personal evolution if it's you know seen in that context and really like what I've noticed instead of uh, suppressing it or uh, avoiding it is really going deeper into it to face it whatever negative emotion comes up you know sitting with it and just letting it arise let it come up be it anger sadness grief guilt whatever and just you know feel it express it cry or whatever or you know, and then in my own healing process, that's how I got into body work, it, you know, receiving a lot of body work because a lot of stuff, trauma, wounds, whatever we've taken on from childhood, anything is stored in our body, right? In muscles and tissue and, and body work or any kinds of, that kind of healing work can help to bring these emotions, you know, to forefront and the body knows how to heal itself and release it in a safe manner, right? And I mean, the worst you can do is really suppressing it with all kinds of pharmaceuticals or addiction, you know. I'm not even talking about what most people understand uh, under addiction in terms of drug abuse, but addiction, as, you know, workahol workaholic, is an, uh, workaholic uh, people, you know, avoid a lot, especially in, in our Western culture, get distract themselves with constantly working, working, or entertainment, TV, food, uh, sex, whatever it may be, there are many, many avoidance strategies, you know, uh, or even spiritual avoidance strategies, which ties more into the, you know, distorted, quote-unquote, new age teachings, which a lot of it is spiritual bypassing, right, where we just, um, you know, for example, the fallacy of, like, just think positive thoughts, always be positive, then you experience positive things, and avoid the negative, but that just increases the shadow and the suppression and it just will come out eventually in, in other neurotic ways, right? So, <clears throat> yeah, so in general, like, when I look back um, in my quote-unquote dark night of the soul, it's been definitely hard, you know, and I have had my share of, like, you know, got into drugs and all of that, but, you know, I remember the one one morning I woke up and I was out of nowhere, I was just crying. I was just really something inside of me was just begging for attention in my mid 20s. And I remember clearly the day, uh, that morning when I woke up and, and told myself, I gotta, I need to, I, I literally said to myself, I need to figure myself out, otherwise, I'm not going to survive this. I'm going to kill myself. 
And that day, I went to a to a bookstore, just aimlessly going to this bookstore, and there was this book out there laying, and it was um, Krishnamurti's Freedom from the Known, and I was just so drawn to it, and I bought it, and that kind of kick-started my journey, right? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Krishnamurti's writings, but he's like, I call him a spiritual anarchist, and he really like blew my mind open, right? And then... You know, then one thing leads to the other. And I feel in terms of uh, giving advice, it's like what I've noticed in my own life and also working with, with, with people now, it's, you know, what, what I've said a lot is that everybody has their own individual process within that, right? So, but what I've noticed, if you really sincerely stick to the process and really like um, <clears throat> make efforts and quote unquote ask, the true meaning of asking, you shall receive, then there will be help. The right book or teaching or teacher or whatever will come across and help you exactly with where you're at, you know. It's just we need to be open open for that and not uh, give in, <laughs> so to speak, right. And, um, yeah, but uh, it, is, it is really, it is, it's a different process for each. But, you know, again, feeling um, depressed or down and, and despair you know, in light of, of, of our really fragmented society that is disconnected from nature and, and spirit and, 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 and themselves literally is a natural reaction, you know. It's actually a sign of a healthy psyche that is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm even going that far. I feel it's actually a pathological, <laughs> so to speak, not uh, to to you know be positive, uplift all the time, and be in the matrix and all this kind of you know um, rats race people engage in, and 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 uh, just live along without you know ever questioning you know what what we're really doing here on this planet and what's really going on. So that's kind of in a nutshell. I would yeah, say. and glad you ended on that note because that was going to be the next subject. Uh, switching gears to the hidden knowledge surrounding our planet and humanity's origins. Um, just uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to give my little spiel on this before I give you the chance to uh, agree or disagree, for lack of a better phrase, with it, with what I've just said about this planet's origins. Uh, Mother Earth. Um, well, we were created as a Earth was created originally as a seven-dimensional seed planet. That's not me talking. That's Akashic Records reader Andrew Bartz is talking, and the significance with the seventh dimension. My understanding of it is is that uh, that's where service to self ends. I mean, the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimension of consciousness or density of consciousness, whatever you want to call it, is much more wonderful than the third dimension that we're in. But even t to those dimensions, the entities in there still exhibit some degree of uh, service to self behavior. But once you get to the seventh dimension, there it's strictly service to others behavior. So in a sense, you could say Mother Earth was created, the planet was created to teach entities or enable entities to become service to others entities. And Mark Kimmel, in my interview with him, talked about how talked talked about how the earth was created to be a jewel of the universe um so to speak and regarding our the human origins a lot of people have said that humanity uh its origins begin in the lyra star system that i believe is the harp of uh, constellation um lyra has uh, according to some article i did a show on by my when i had no guest i did a show on an article called characteristics of et races and it said that the lyra star system has a lot of different et races in it and that stands to make sense because it has been said the reason that a, a lot of aliens are interested in Earth is because um, we are genetic royalty. Humans are genetic royalty, and uh, they can use our genes to do a lot of uh, things, be it benevolent or malevolent things. And uh, that stands to reason that if that's the case, then the Lyra star system would have a lot of different races in it. And also our origins, if you want to get into more modern times, not really, well, people would debate modern in this, but... Um, in my interviews um, with Jordan Maxwell um, last week, I, at the, I finished it off talking about how I know that Zachariah Sitchin's uh, first three books are very accurate. That's not me talking again. That's Andrew Bartz's Akashic Records reader talking. And um, I debunked all that stuff um, about Zachariah Sitchin being a CIA and Illuminati disinfo agent. All that stuff's a lie. I'm not really going to get into it now on this show for the sake of time, but 
that's how I can I can assert that all stuff about Sitchin being a fraud is a lie. He was part of a smear campaign to keep people from realizing his first three books were very accurate. And um, so, yeah, the Anunnaki from Nibiru, they genetically engineered um, humanity by combining their DNA with Homo erectus DNA um, to create Homo sapiens, and they used us as a slave species. Um, although the reasons they came to Earth and are, are not uh, the rate, thing that Sitchin said, there are some Sitchin was wrong about that, and also a little about the time period. But uh, 300,000 years ago is when they genetically engineered um, humans in that manner. So I've babbled long enough in regards to Mother Earth and humanity's origins. Do you have anything to say about this and give your take on the whole thing? Well, yeah, no, I agree on some of the things you said, also in particular about Sitchin's work, which I've read. I agree. It's kind of like the way I see it, it's truth mixed with lies. You know, there are some valid points if you cross-reference it and, and do other research. But he's definitely been off on some other things. And, um, you know, with the seven dimension, I mean, there are many different uh, um, frameworks to look at through, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like system, and like I'm, I'm using the so-called seven density model. Right, in, in terms of levels of consciousness, not necessarily dimensions, with the first density being really dense matter, rock, you know, uh, primal matter, basically. Second density being um, nature and plants and, uh, you know, basically the vet, uh, vegetable kingdom and animal kingdom. Third density is, is the human experience. And then we get into the hyperdimensional, non physical realm. Uh, Paraphysical uh, realm of fourth density, and then we go higher into fifth density, and starting at sixth density, it's pure f f thought form, and seventh density is union with the one, right? And in terms of the evolution of consciousness, you know, like like you mentioned before, I also use the terms service to self versus service to other others, which I find the best way to describe or put into terms the duality that we experience, especially on a, a 3D level, right, of positive, negative, or quote-unquote good versus quote-unquote evil. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> so from a much higher perspective, you know, creator or whatever universe, whatever you name want to give, doesn't judge either path. So even quote-unquote free will has its, uh, evil has its free will to exist, right, service to self. And, but it's all about choice and frequency and alignment, what you choose to align yourself with. And we, um, in terms of illusion of consciousness, the friction between those two polarities is needed for, um, <clears throat> um, for progress and soul lessons to learn, right? So in terms of the origin of humanity, I also like, agree with this. Uh, I think you said 300,000 years ago when the manipulation or genetic yeah, manipulation happened. That exactly. Time. When yeah. basically that's the original meaning of the fall from grace, fall from paradise, right, so to speak, where we have been genetically modified or even created by uh, alien races, hyperdimensional uh, forces, or also physical ETs, to keep us on a lower frequency, right, to diminish our full potential in order to keep us imprisoned. Ultimately, you know. <clears throat> But I realize I mean, more and more from a hyperdimensional perspective, the, the reason for keeping us in prison uh, in those frequency is to farm us as their quote-unquote food source, right? Because they feed off of um, <clears throat> human suffering and that low frequency, and it sustains themselves, you know? And in that sense, it's not like they're quote-unquote evil. It's just they sustain themselves um, <clears throat> through that energetic food as their soul eaters, just like we sustain ourselves from eating vegetables or meat or whatever your choice of diet is, right? So, <clears throat> but, you know, over the course of evolution now, in the period we're in right now, I feel there's a big transformation happening. Nothing close to a collective awakening, but, you know, a certain amount of, of, of people on this planet are, are ready to ascend, so to speak, to a higher state of being, more sovereign you know, a state of being and as we are activating our original blueprint, you know, our dormant DNA and raise our frequency where we, not, where we are not being subjected to these kind of interferences and control anymore, right? And, uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, I think that, you know, in relation to anything what's going on in the world, even 3D conspiracies and, you know, 
what you just were, you know, I was listening to some of the news where you were reading, you know, like the refugee crisis, for example, which is compl basically social engineering to destabilize Europe and whatnot. And you can look at it all from the 3D perspective, even Illuminati, secret societies, but it's still just a manifestation of the hyperdimensional hyper -dimensional manipulation that is going on, right? And uh, so, because essentially, that's uh, <clears throat> that friction created. You know, all for example, the polarization. You know, just to give that example, we see in Europe, for example, right, with all the refugees c coming there, and then all these uh, <clears throat> rape cases that they ca they come to light, and it polarizes people, right? You know, you have on one side the lefties, progressives, who just bring let's we need to embrace everyone, bring everybody in, no discernment. And then the right wing and like you know stands up and and the hate against refugees or if you say anything against refugees now then you're being called a racist right away, but you know all of that just creates that emotional loose you know all this friction is infighting which these hyperdimensional entities feed off of, and even on a more basic level what I see especially in the U S you know this silly game of of politics right which politics and government is basically. Uh, an, uh, an iconic uh, concept I just posted about this on Facebook today, like the need or desire to be ruled, to be governed, is in a sense an alien mind imprint to give away our own individual power to outside authority. No matter how well-meaning the intention, it just keeps us away from our own inherent power and, and wholeness and spiritual self connected to who we truly are by giving our power away. And then it's always identification is also in the name of the game how people get trapped trap themselves being identified with a certain country, nation, or political party, be it progressive, liberal, or conservative, right wing, or whatever. That polarization also creates that luge, you know, that um, food to feed off. And then people have automatically, the, when they identify themselves, emotional bias and just, you know, whatever chosen savior candidate they choose, you know, they just reject anything that may not put a good light on this person and, and you know, naturally um, attack any, any, uh, the, the other candidate from the other party. But in the end, all of it from a hyperdimensional perspective, all this friction in, um, through these illusory beliefs and, and taking part in this uh, political circus sideshow, as I call it, the most basic uh, setup of the matrix control system, it plays right into the hand of, of, of the hyperdimensional overlords who, you know, always play both sides, good cop, bad cop kind of thing. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, <clears throat> for me in that sense, it's literally no difference between Bernie Sanders and Trump. Like both, I don't, you know, <laughs> it, I'm, I'm so beyond this whole political game that I, even just giving it any attention it just feeds into the whole agenda and pun intended so to speak right because the only way out so to speak to truly um, <clears throat> you know transcend is transcendence transcending the matrix control system you cannot work escape it through the system right it's an extra oxymoron and, and, and there's no such there's no such things as conscious politics it's also an oxymoron so what I see is that a lot of people, they get, you know, as Plato said in his allegory of the cave, distracted by the shadows on the wall. They're so fixated on this whole 3D setup and never question, like, for example, the most basic um, um, control mechanism, which is government and, you know, and, and, and being ruled. And because we've been living under these control mechanisms for so long that it became so normalized, which again ties into pathology becoming normalized. And so we we uh, recreate them out of our own free will, and that's how this whole hyperdimensional control works as well. It's not by force, it's not necessarily martial law. It's literally by over thousands of years, you know, creating the beliefs we have now, be it political beliefs or religious beliefs. Religion is, is mass mind control as well, on on many levels, on all levels anyway. So you know, so people. <clears throat> don't question what they've been told and taught. They don't question official history, you know, and, and, and uh, the way we're being educated, what we've been told through the media. So it just keeps just recreating itself. It's like a closed loop, you know. So 
the only way out again is 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 claiming our own claiming our sovereignty as as individuals to really like become your own leader right to not give away your power you know for example by voting if you vote it's, it's literally you giving an energetic make an energetic agreement to tell the state please govern me please rule over me it's literally you know you giving away your power you locking yourself into this whole system you know and it, that has metaphysical re- repercussions and uh, <clears throat> but again it's like you know what it realize it's really really people have so identified with their beliefs and 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 never question it so it's really hard um to <laughs> convey this to people i mean uh you know how can you make people aware of this whole extraterrestrial phenomena, for example, which puts uh, the whole evolution of humanity into question and, and who we truly are when they cannot even see through such basic control mechanisms like, like government. So that's, did I, I don't know, I went off of a bandwagon here. <laughs> no, that, that's cool. We got we to gotta do a full two-hour show. I'm, I'm glad you're doing that. And, uh, <laughs> well, um, switching gears, uh, Dimension and density. Well, let's not switch gears. Let's get back to that because you said you seem to think there's a difference between dimension and density. Well, a lot of people assert they're just two different um, words for the same thing. Although um, Andromeda Council contactee told, like at the Mount Shasta conference, that his uh, Andromeda Council contactees told him that dimensions are the one, two, three, four, five, the the whole numbers in terms of consciousness evolution, and the densities are the um, like the three dot one, three dot two, three dot three, or the four dot one dot. To, you get the idea there, and um, Bashar, he, um, the well, Daryl Anka, the ET contact who channels Bashar, um, when he was channeling Bashar at the um, uh, N5D uh, uh, conference in Los Angeles that I was at, he um, said that you can think of dimensions as a country and densities as different states within that country, although there are those like um, Tom Montauk, who I interviewed, that said that density is the uh, degree of awareness that you're at, while the dimension is more of the location where you're in when you're in that state of awareness or whatever. So if you think there's a difference between oh, yeah, dimension that's, and density... That's exact. I mean, Tom, uh, I'm, uh, I'm familiar with this word. We pretty much use the same uh, uh, framework so to speak, yeah. So could you just uh, tell us what that is, the way you understand it, the difference? In the sense of, like, levels of awareness, you know what I mean? Um, not like, because dimensions, you know, may, maybe it's like, it's all like, you know, we, the thing is when we use these uh, concepts, it's just like you have to keep in mind these are just concepts, and a lot of the things we talk about, especially when it comes to the non-physical realm, dimensions or densities, higher densities or non-physical, it's, really hard hard to use language and words, right? Because it's very hard to, uh, for our mind to comprehend, right? So in many ways, I feel like, like you said before, sometimes when people talk about dimensional densities, they maybe, they probably most likely talk about the same thing in their own way, so to speak. Does it make sense? Um, but uh, in the end, uh, you know, the reason why I don't use dimensions is because then people mistake that as the, you know, mathematical way of of seeing uh, things, and uh, for me, density, you know, that um, uh, that model of of of, of the seven density or originally originated from I don't know if you're familiar with the raw material from the 80s. Have you heard of that? The the raw material no? from the 80s. No, I think you're raw no, material. Okay. Yeah, it's a channel material, like a group channel. Pretty interesting um, material, and that's also where actually the the the, um, the concept of service to self and service to others originated. You know, and there are other sources. But again, I mean, speaking on the topic of channeled material, that's a whole can of worms on its own, <laughs> because there's a lot of uh, you know disinformation out there coming from so-called channeled sources, right? So. I, I'd be very careful with, with channel information in general, including Bashar, which I personally have some issues with. Right? Um, but again, truth is mixed with lies. You know what I mean? It's like a, a no source holds the whole truth, and then there are various distortions. You know, I use, uh, similar to Tom Montag, use a certain channel material, you know, as an inspiration, and then, you know, yeah, use it to... Um, 
back it up with other research and find other resources and so on and so forth and you know a couple of my own experiences which you know uh <clears throat> I try to incorporate in this in all of that as well but uh <clears throat> it's this whole uh, f- uh topic of 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 channel material is just you know that that alone is like it's a it's a big can of worms uh how to have to say it <laughs> Well, I, I can't agree with you more. It is, although in a sense, those ET contactees do hold the key to getting answers to a lot of the questions that we um, can't get unless we contacted ETs. But then again, there is the potential for disinfo because they, there are ways to make someone believe they're channeling a good entity when it's a not so good entity. So just got to use discernment there. Uh, just go with your yeah. gut. And Especially since you know most often, the, how, how this saying goes that. Um, Satan appears as angels of light. So, you know, negative forces can appear as positive forces, you know, just, you know, you know, especially through channel material as hooking into the ego, giving people what they want to hear and all those kind of things. And the best way, I mean, that's that's how disinformation works. Disinformation is not flat out lies, you know. And on any level, be it even uh, content, pro content intelligence programs on a government level or hyperdimensional content pro for channeling, the best way to disinform and to infuse lies is actually, you know, what my friend calls a shit sandwich, just putting, a, you know, a lie in between some truth. And then, you know, people get hooked to the truth but swallow the lie as well because they're not discerning, right? And then they can be vectored off the path or, you know. So discernment is very critical, you know, really using logic and intuition to, to your best to ability. And that ties into, since when we had this topic, into really sincere self-work, right? Like to really like um, understand, you know, your own emotion, you know, your emotional body, your psych- psychology, the whole disillusionment process of letting go of false beliefs, you know, our triggers, our shadow, aspect and and how we take in information, how we maybe unconsciously or consciously distort information, how we get triggered, how we have bias based on wishful thinking, you know, or reject information because it sounds too terrible, doesn't make us feel good, or just blindly accept information just because it makes it makes us feel good, right? So all of this comes into account when when you're in this field researching it, right? So for me, Seeking truth about the reality of what's going on in our world goes hand in hand with that deeper self work. And I feel also certain knowledge, you know, for me, truth is basically, is a really not, is the secret or the, the truth about reality and all the secrets are quote unquote hidden in plain sight. You know, and it's just, um, there's a certain level of being and, and awareness and conscious needed to actually perceive certain truths, right, which even go beyond the logical mind. And, you know, and we see this in, in ancient esoteric teachings, which it, uh, you use symbolism and metaphor and, what, and whatnot to convey certain truths, which only certain adepts and people who are really tuned into that realm, so to speak, could perceive and understand. And most often people take it literal, you know, and, and distort it. I mean, even as much as the Bible has distorted it is and been used, obviously, for social control, there are some deeper esoteric truths, right, if 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 it's not taken literal. <laughs> and then one understands the symbolism. So, yeah, so in terms of understanding all the, the, you know, in terms of understanding and seeking truth and knowledge, um, uh, self-work is, is, is imperative. And you know, checking our blind spots, and you know, for me in my own personal process, I also I have my own uh, network and support system because sometimes I need to check myself with, with, with a good friend or somebody who's engaged in the same work work because we all have our blind spots and sometimes cannot see, you know, how we <clears throat> may not see ourselves clearly, and that can distort the information we're taking in and whatnot. So, <clears throat> again, like like my work says on my website, it's a holistic approach, right? It's really like <clears throat> seeking truth. It's all about the work within and without. It's not separated. Um, th- thank you very much. Took the mute button a while to mute there. But uh, 
All right. Um, you do a lot of work on uh, UFOs. Might as well talk for just a brief moment about that. Um, the, what, what exactly are the UFOs we see up in the sky? Well, according to um, George Kavaslis, he t- said that um, the majority of UFOs that we see are actually connected in some way to the military-industrial complex. And in my interview with John Lear, John Lear did say that um, – Excuse me. All uh, military industrial complex UFOs do have some extraterrestrial nexus connection to them, every single one. And um, so I guess you could say um, since malevolent ETs like reptilians and greys control the governments, they control the military, then most of the UFOs we see are of a malevolent nature. Um, but a lot of the benevolent ones we see do either come from other planets, other dimensions, from within the Earth. Um, there is, like, the hollow earth theory there. They come from within the Earth. And, um, well, uh, there are also the hoaxes, but we don't really care about those. And a lot of the UFOs that we see in the sky at night that people think are satellites, you have to understand uh, those satellites can't reflect um, like that. So what you, when you're seeing what a lot of people think is a satellite, like a star-sized thing move across the sky, that's no... Um, satellite that's a ufo and we saw a couple of those at mount shasta um when um james gilliland was there and there were actually two moving across not too far apart in the sky at the same speed same velocity uh in the same straight line so there was definitely some extraterrestrial force uh behind there for lack of a better phrase extraterrestrial but uh what are ufos and what do you think ufos are here for uh take as much time as you want on this you got the floor uh, well, basically, in, in general, I agree with what you just said. It's a mix of, of what you said and all of the above. Right? <laughs> in terms of partly um, military-industrial projects, you know what I mean? Um, back engineering and, uh, you know, uh, re- crash retrieval and, and back engineering from alien technology. I think Ritter Dolan talks about this as well. I'm sure you're familiar with this work. Um, and, uh, you know, but for me... You know, based on my own research and experience, for the most part, it's a hyperdimensional phenomenon, meaning that these UFOs or crafts are not necessarily nuts and bolts, you know, Star Trek type or Hollywood type, what we see in, in Hollywood movies type starships or spaceships coming from another planet of the long distance and now all of a sudden appear here on Earth. But actually, are you know hyperdimensional in nature, meaning that these entities who operate these vehicles um, have control over ta- uh, time and space and can pop in and out of this reality, out of physical reality. That's why even you, when you have these sightings, sometimes you see these really fast zigzag movements and just like appearing, disappearing. It's not because of you know the propulsion system is not like because well, how we think it. It's literally they you know, um, use hyperdimensional technology in, in, in order to have control over, over physical manifestation, right, and, 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 and all that. And in terms of, you know, um, what they're here for, I mean, if you look, if you look back into, into ancient history, then, you know, you see that this phenomena is not just a modern, you know, uh, manifestation but has been around for thousands and thousands of years and has also been interpreted depending on the time epoch or the culture and whatnot, right? Uh, like in this day and age I feel the reason why we see these these typical UFO shaped uh sources, you know, which really has become more and more popular since I believe in the fifties or something, you know, around that time, is also I feel that these entities <coughs> Um, adjust to the zeitgeist, so to speak, of 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 the world. You know, there have been, you know, when you look back and do some research into into the ancient sightings, so to speak, that you know they interpret as chariots or, you know, even in terms of entities like fairies and 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 all of that. And and nowadays we have, you know, the typical gray alien reptilians and whatnot. And. Uh, <clears throat> Reptilians, for example, based on my own research, are really not a race on their own, but biogenetic robots who are being used by reptilians uh, uh, or have been created by reptilians, literally grown, so to speak, you know, for the purpose of um, the whole abduction phenomena. And 
because reptilians themselves are also hyperdimensional and they have a hard time really staying in our 3D reality, right? So they use um, gray aliens kind of to do the quote-unquote dirty work for them. But uh, <clears throat> in terms of positive ETs, you know, for me, first of all, positive ETs, you know, true positive beings on that higher level, you know, based, again, on, on the concept of STS versus STO, respect free will, right? And they would not, definitely not abduct us, <laughs> which is an infringement of, on, on, of free will, no matter how, you know, even if it's manipulated free will. Um, so, I mean, that's a, that's a, a touchy subject in its own, and I'm not, you know, I, have you actually uh, watched the documentary I made with a friend, my UFO documentary? I'm just curious. What, what's it called? If it's on UFO TV Studios, I've seen every documentary on that channel. So right. Is it on uh, there? I don't know. It's called UFO Dan. It's a question of contact, and we, you know, we show more the un, you know, unacknowledged, more dark aspect of this of this uh, phenomenon. You know, starting off with Richard Dolan's work, which uh, you know he is a, it's really good for anybody who is just starting to get into this uh, phenomenon. His work is I highly recommend because he is really scientific about it. Just you know, basing it on government documents and whatnot, and facts, literally. But then we go more into the abduction phenomena and really like, uh, you know, presenting the work of uh, David Jacobs or especially Dr. Carla Turner, who discovered more like, you know, disconcerting things about this whole phenomena. But we also talk about, you know, disinformation content pro, especially in this field. So much is like distorted and hidden from us and you know, there's one uh, project that comes to mind, which is this disclosure project by Stephen Graham, which is all kinds of red flags written all over. And, you know, <clears throat> there are some things he says, there's some validity to it. Again, through this mix of lies. But he, for example, denies that there are actually any abductions happening by aliens, that it's all military-industrial uh, complex who is engaged in these abductions in order to as he says, put a bad light on the aliens, which, like, he literally denies the the alien abduction phenomenon and also actually even goes so far to say that there are no negative aliens and only positive ones. And, you know, I feel that that's, his, that's a very good example of, of, of counterintelligence and disinformation, right, to really um, appeal to wishful thinking, the new age crowd, and the idea that, you know. Well, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got to stop yeah. you there for a moment. I'll let you continue with your thing about Stephen Greer and UFOs and everything. But one might make the case: uh, Stephen Greer is right when he says that there are no bad ent- no bad aliens. And the reason he's right is because, as people like the late Dolores Cannon have asserted, fear is an illusion. Infinite love is the only truth. Everything else is illusion. Therefore, there's no such thing as a malevolent alien simply because fear is an illusion. But then again, many would assert that that's a silly ridiculous way of looking at it so now that i've got that out of the way do you agree or disagree <laughs> no that uh thanks for mentioning dolores con Con and i also don't agree she has sees it the same way and again i'm not throwing out the baby with the bathwater right i'm not saying like all the work you know i, I read i i cannot say much of dolores can and i have read all of her work only some of it you know some of it i don't know, really you know confirms my own research and experiences but again but even what he just said, it really doesn't make no sense because, yeah, fear is an illusion, but this, this doesn't mean that negative entities exist, you know. They can still exist. Like I had my experiences, you know, from hyperdimensionally interference and attacks and whatnot, and, but fear didn't come into the equation, you know. <laughs> if you react with fear, yeah, that's what they even feed off more, you know. But that's actually a logical fallacy just because fear is an illusion, you know, doesn't automatically mean that there are no negative aliens. That's like, uh, actually makes no sense. Is that what Drea actually said or Dolores Cannon? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, well, um, I, no, I, I just made that whole thing up about uh, okay. whether it's ridiculous or a good way of looking at it because fear is an illusion. I, I just came up with right. that. So, all right, but yeah, you, yeah. you were um, talking about um, other things and I interrupted you. You wanted to say anything else? Well, I was just going to say like in general, like, you know, like this, you know, um, in terms of positive versus negative aliens, right? You know, again, like <clears throat> going back to positive forces, yeah, they may be out there, but they are not interfering with us. They're also not going to save us. 
in a sense, because they understand from a higher perspective in terms of free will and understanding of learning lesson in terms for soul evolution, soul progress, is that we need to learn the lesson ourselves. You know, they're not going to save us from tyrant tyranny and and whatever oppression. You know, it's like it goes back to what I said before, for example, about government and individuality and sovereignty. We need to learn to become our own leaders to our own sovereignty and not give our power away or wait for saviors, be it Bernie Sanders or aliens. <laughs> it really just comes down to, you know, <clears throat> claiming our own power. And we are more powerful than first we believe or, you know, or or these negative entities and aliens, whatever you may want to call them, hyperdimensional critters, they are not as powerful as they want to uh, make us believe uh, with their fear tactics, you know. That's that's what I see when, when people get into this topic or they watch our documentary and they are, like you said, they react with fear and like I've been I've been accused of fear mongering and all this kind of stuff. And for me, when I was researching all of this and, 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 and writing about this, for me fear never came into the equation. I was always just like, wow, this is fascinating and then you know, dealing with my own experiences because once you expose this kind of, you know, knowledge or or information, you attract a certain attention. But fear never really came in, in, into the equation. So when somebody tells me, like, this is fear mongering, you're spreading fear, then I turn it around onto them from a shamanic perspective, you know. Like, if this cause, this is just information. If this causes fear in you, you may want to look within yourself where this is really coming from with, instead of blaming the author, researcher for spreading fear who's simply just presenting information, right? So how we, again, fear, yes, it's an illusion. It's based on the illusion of time that something may happen to us, right? Uh, <clears throat> so, but if anybody reacts with fear, then it's like an inquirer should, instead of projecting outwardly blaming another person, it should, you know, and again, in terms of self-awareness and sincere self-work, we should take a look within and really, you know, see where this fear is actually coming from, and maybe there's something to be learned. So I hope that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, <laughs> that does indeed make sense. And uh, let's move on to um, hyperdimension. Just so you know, I do have one caller in the queue here. He has a question mark next to uh, his or her uh, number, so he does want to say something. I'll be taking calls in um, uh, about uh, 13 minutes. So... Um, <clears throat> Hyperdimensional. Actually, you know what? Let's do that afterwards. Cause that's going to take a little while. Um, paranormal. Maybe we can get back to paranormal after the call or two. But um, in regards to paranormal, the name paranormal is is not right because there's nothing abnormal about the paranormal. It's just a part of reality that we do not perceive. Therefore, we add the word para before normal. But that is a misnomer. Many would assert. And um, certain paranormal things that I think I might want to get your take on. Um, like a Bigfoot, Sasquatch. What what is that? Well, according to um John Lear, there are at least one species of um Sasquatch that do come from Mars that was brought down here. However, uh Andrew Bartz's Akashic Records Reader says that a majority of Sasquatch that we see are actually higher density entities that are temporarily incarnating as an ape like creature in order to um wake wake humanity up to the fact that paranormal things do indeed exist. And I have a feeling, I could be wrong, but I have a feeling the same could be said about the Loch Ness Monster and other sea monsters that uh, people have seen throughout the the course of time. And also uh, ghosts. What is a ghost? There's always the, uh, it's always been said that ghosts have some sort of unfinished business. That's why they're um, still a ghost. Uh, some people would debate whether or not a ghost is in a state of limbo. Um, that's debatable whether limbo is a proper term to describe what a ghost is in, but there's no question that um, a ghost can be thought of as an entity that's in another um, frequency. You would have to um, vibrate your frequency, y yourself at another frequency to be able to interact in the reality the ghost is in, and the ghost, when you can see it, it has temporarily undergone interference into um, our reality. And uh, Jim Mars, in a recent presentation, presentation he did um, about remote viewing and aliens, he talks about how there is a ghost in Roswell, in the Roswell, New Mexico area, a ghost of the alleged alien that uh, crashed there, and when they were in a hospital, I believe it was in like the um, Roswell area, and um, there was, uh, he had some guy who was like a ghost hunter with a tool that could detect ghosts, and where the ghost was allegedly said to be by some 
somebody who said that that's where the ghost is. Um, the person bro- took his device over to the uh, area, and he what, like put the wand of the device across. And like when he got to where the ghost was said to be, the device started beeping higher, higher, higher. And then when he took it away from the ghost, was the device stopped going nuts like it was. So there's obvious if that if there's truth to that, then that means there is some sort of technology that we can use to detect ghosts. But um. Uh, and also there's the whole thing about orbs, um, rods, and those things that people see that some people uh, take in the UFO field. I'm not really going to speculate on that right now because I've babbled long enough. But paranormal things, the things I mentioned and other things you're concerned about with the paranormal. Um, ten minutes before I want to start taking calls, and then after the call we can finish up with this. But what's your take on this? Well, uh, personally, I have not really re- uh, done any research into the whole like Bigfoot and all these phenomenon. Uh, but, you know... For me, like just again from a hyperdimensional perspective, uh, I can refer to the work of John Keel. I don't know if you're aware of his work. There was even mo- made a movie about uh, uh, one of his cases called The Mothman Prophecies. You know, where this town was also uh, dealing with all kinds of paranormal um, uh, appearances and this entity and, and all kinds of high strangeness. Uh, you know what all these things are, and maybe Bigfoot and all these other things, maybe bleed throughs from other higher dimensional, higher density, or whatever, 4D, whatever you may, however you want to, may you want to see it, uh, bleed through that then manifests as these entities. You know, and there can be certain areas on our planet that they are, you know, where, where the veil is more thinner, so to speak, and that's that's what people see, right? So, in terms of ghosts, I mean. It's a very general term. It could be earthbound spirits of literally um, um, <clears throat> ghosts of, of diseased humans who are stuck in this in this lower astral and have made a transi- transition because of, of of the trauma of death and whatnot, and that ties into haunted houses and whatnot, and energies or ghosts are stuck in certain places, you know, which we then perceive. So these are not necessarily aliens, you know, but. Uh, <clears throat> Again, earthbound spirits that are just stuck in the, in the lower astral, so, um, so to speak. And uh, but uh, um, in general, like f- for me, like you know, paranormal, hyperdimensional. Like I use, uh, f- I, I, I agree with you. I'm not a big uh, fan of the word paranormal, <laughs> so to speak. And obviously, you know, if the state of all corrupted science. It's actually also not science, truly scientifically approached, you know, and, uh, you know, just because we don't, well, the technology is really out there, it's just suppressed, but mainstream technology has no way of detecting uh, these energies. It doesn't mean that they don't exist, right? But again, in, this all, in that field, as you know, again, it's all smokes and mirrors too, so you never know what is true, what is not. I mean, there's definitely something happening you know, on that level. But again, I have not really looked into the whole Bigfoot phenomena or similar, you know, cases like that. So I can't really say more to that. All right, that, that That's cool. And I guess uh, since this is the only call in the queue, I'll take this person's call. Area code 516, you are on the air. What's your name, where you're from, what's your question? Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm from South Carolina. Um, I was just calling up, questioning your theory on... Uh, you know, truth and what it is and how people can take something and make it their own truth, even if it's not necessarily scientifically factually true. And you had mentioned um, free will. And and to me, my thought is if somebody believes something is true, it is their truth. And and who is anyone else to step in and try and convince them otherwise? Um, it, It almost seems like that's doing someone a disservice if they're happy believing something and it makes them vibrate at a higher level and feel good then why tamper with that? So what is your question about? Um, about about what, um, and, and if you do think that what I just said is true, why, why step into the realm of trying to alter someone's truth based on, you know, information that you have brought forward? I well, guess it's just a philosophical never, uh, question. Right, I hear you. Well, first I would never try to, you know, change somebody's mind or convince somebody. It's, it's also free will. People are free to believe whatever they want to believe. But when it comes to truth, it's like what you're mentioning is basically solipsism, that, you know, objective truth doesn't exist. The truth is just what we believe to be true, and that's all there is. You know, for me, the way I see it, I, 
I acknowledge that there's personal truth in the sense of your own soul lesson or karma, whatever you want to call it, what you need to experience and lesson to learn, you know, in, in, in terms of your own individual personal soul evolution, that is your personal truth, right? But there is, there's higher truths and even so-called objective truth that transcends, transcends it all that is true regardless of what you believe or not. You know? And how, and do, you, feel, how do you know that? How do you, like, how do you know that, that that's a fact? Um, you know, but, you know, again, like that ties into what I said earlier. Like it, it ties into, uh, you know, into sincere self work in terms of esoteric work of really um, um, doing the work to activate your higher centers to raise your level of being to higher states of awareness. And we will never, in our state, to come to a full objective understanding of everything that is because. By the nature of our incarnation is 3D, we always be subjective to to a certain degree, right? But in terms of evolution and and awareness and evolution of consciousness, <clears throat> the more we become aware and and the more we see from higher levels that also transcend uh, the five sensory realm. You know, we're kind of caught into the five senses and the logical mind, which has its place, right? And critical thinking is okay. crucial. But there are also areas which, you know, go beyond it, the sixth sense and really like, you know, perceiving reality in a way that cannot necessarily even um, uh, be proven uh, by our, you know, generic scientific method, so to speak. And, uh, you know, uh, just because it cannot be proven, that terms doesn't mean it does not exist, right? So we can yeah. maybe speaking from a hypothetical perspective, you know, for example, all this alien stuff what people experience and whatnot, you know, since, you know, a lot of hardcore scientists say there's no proof for the abduction phenomena or UFOs and whatnot, like hot, like, because they're looking for material evidence, so to speak. But the nature of the phenomena, as I said before, is hyperdimensional, right? So it's, it's beyond the, uh, the, um, the 3D realm, so it's, 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 it becomes very tricky, right? But again, you know, when you research, for example, the abduction phenomena that people have experienced worldwide in millions, there's a, there's a pattern which cannot just be uh, you know, spilled then, right. onto like one's you know <clears throat> personal psychosis or whatever, right? So yep. in that sense, objectively speaking, people experience, you know, the, have the same uh, typical abduction experience, for example. So there's something you know, which we may need to look in and question, and it's, it's a continuing process, you know what I mean? I would never say, mm -hmm. like, oh, this is the truth, and this is, this is how it works. I see it in my own life, in my own personal evolution, you know, um, <clears throat> that it's just, it, it's a process, and it ties into your own personal evolution, right? But uh, I think it's, 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 it's a danger, the, the idea of solipsism, that, you know, whatever we make up as the truth is, the, is whatever we want to believe is the truth, and and uh, if it makes feel, you know, what you mentioned before, if it makes somebody feel good or whatnot, that's, you know, it, I don't know. For me, it's, that's not how I approach, you know, life. I know I had my quote-unquote new age phase, so to speak, uh, some many years ago. And, you know, just really like being positive, just, you know, projecting positivity and all this kind of stuff. I don't mean to, you know, uh, denounce positive thinking or anything like this, but I can see how this can be a trap in itself, or we project what see the world through rose-colored glasses, you know, or even on a basic 3D level. You can even, in terms of objective truth, let's take 9/11 for example. You know, if you objectively research it and and really, you know, apply just basic critical thinking, you will see that the official story is very distorted and cannot possibly be true. How did yeah. exactly? happen maybe we don't know but certainly you know we know that the the official story is not true so you know you know and then i mean that's on the basic 3d level and then you get into these uh, these these more fringe topics and that's you know it's it's a tricky it's a tricky uh um path i understand Does that exactly what you Absolutely, yes, and I'm not trying to be combative at all. I just wanted your perspective, which is exactly what I was looking for. Um, one quick follow-up question. Uh, you, you mentioned your new-agey phase. Well, I guess I'm in that now. 
Um, <laughs> so, so my question to you would be, um, in terms of manifestation and using um, alternate dimensions to obtain the things that you'd like in this physical 3D world we're in right now, what is your mm-hmm. perspective on that? Well, you know, well, I've definitely dabbled in this visualization, manifestations, the secret, and just desiring and visualizing and feeling and then, you know, being in the present moment that you already have it, yada, yada. But what I realize in my own process and where I'm at right now, that it's about alignment. The more I shed, you know, in terms of self-work and also it implies shadow work and clearing myself of, you know, any conditioning, programming, socially, culturally, or whatever, the more I come in alignment with my true self, my higher self, right? Mm -hmm. And the more I'm aligned with that, then things or whatever come to me which I, I need in my you know, for my personal path not necessarily you know the the fallacy or the issue of a lot of people ha- make when it comes to reality creation in terms of you know manifesting your desires they don't question where these desires actually come from a lot of these these desires are socially conditioned or based on wounding because of what we haven't received, you know, maybe from our parents, and then we look at to get it from somebody else or fulfill our own emptiness with material possessions and whatnot, you know. And <clears throat> you can manifest them on some level, right? You may get them, but it's, if eventually it will not bring you true fulfillment or, or wholeness because it's not aligned with who you truly are. And I feel it in my life, you know, when I look back, even like, you know that I mean that ties into on that note also the the fallacy of of what I call the new age version of of creating your own reality. The idea is uh, when something bad to you happens, quote unquote bad, negative, it's because you have been in a bad state of mind, negative thoughts, negative emotions, and on some level, frequency wise, yes, this could have attracted some of these experiences, but it's very much also victim blaming, right? Because I know, especially when you talk about this whole hyperdimensional realm and you seek truth, you know, there will always be opposition forces set upon you to bring you down, right? And when I look back into my own experiences, even the so-called negative, the, the, these were actually very valuable lessons that I needed to learn to become a better person, you know, to really learn that lesson in, in not getting myself into a victim state of consciousness. Very right? good. Very, very good. Thank you very much for that. That was awesome. You're welcome. Yes, thank you for calling in. And by the way, one more thing in regards to truth. Just want to point out, uh, never underestimate the significance of that quote, Obi-Wan Kenobi made in Star Wars when he said, I told you the truth when I said your uh, uh, Darth Vader betrayed and murdered your father, even though he is your father, because many of his truths we cling to depend heavily on our point of view. Just thought I'd point that out to keep that in mind. It's worth uh, considering. All right, thanks a lot. Take care now. Call in Thank anytime. you. I'll be listening. Don't don't hang me up. <laughs> I will. Thank you. I'm you. All right. And the next caller, um, regular here, uh, Parasite Milton. You are, uh, hello, you got music in the background. Could you please turn that off? Parasite Milton, you're on the air, but could you please turn your music off? Could you turn your music off, please? So I'm going to have to put you on mute because I can't hear you. There's too much music. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry about that. I was talking to that person in the queue just now. Um, let me let them know in the chat. Uh, please turn off your music. Nice interlude. Yeah, that was um, totally uncalled for there. All right. Um, let's try that again. All right. Your music is still going. Please um, turn that off. All right, never mind. I'm going to give you uh, five minutes or maybe ten minutes to uh, figure out what's wrong there and why I can hear you. Maybe hang up or call in again. So um, anyway, uh, you mentioned hyperdimensional realities. Might as well talk about that. Um, All right, well, actually, no, let's not. it's, It's off right now in the chat. So no, it's not off. I can still hear it. I have to figure, figure out what's wrong here, but all right, I'll give you 10 minutes to get that straight. Uh, but right now, getting back to hyperdimensional realities, um, first of all, how many dimensions are there? Well, that raises no question of what a dimension, or for that matter, what a density is. However, there seem to be two different camps 
in regards to the that are very popular. There's the twelve dimension density camp, and then there's the twenty two dimension density camp. And in my uh, private session with George Kavasilis, he uh, I, I discussed this with him. He's actually at of the twelve dimensional camp. He asserted that well, how many dimensions there are in the universe is. Well, very dependent on someone's point of view. He said, like, what I see as the fifth dimension is what someone else might see as the edge of the visible universe. And in my private session with him, he got into why he made that assertion and why he sees the connection there. But he did say that in his 12-dimensional construct, he could imagine how it is that someone might see 10 dimensions in one. And he says that probably is where the 22-dimensional camp comes from. So in regards to this debate over 12 and 22 dimensions, do you have anything to uh, say about that? Um, I don't, actually. <laughs> I'm not really, like, I haven't, you know, like I said before, I, I use the same, I use the seven-density model, right? And I'm sure there are all kinds of different dimensions, and there's so many different uh, systems and, and frameworks to see it through. But personally, why I'm at right now, it's just like, you know, we are multidimensional beings, you know, speaking of multidimensions, so we are not that just that physical body, right? So we have a high, you know, as the aura, the energy body, the astral body, and, you know, it, you know, it relates also to, like, what it, one theory I've came across that we actually have um, 12 chakras that ex, uh, expand out into the dimensions, so to speak, that may relate to the 12-dimensional model and whatnot. But, uh, you know, like, I've over over the years I just I've never really uh tried to figure it out like you know like for me what you know what it really comes down to it's like what I see in this field you know of, of people exploring this and and trying to understand and conceptualize things you know sometimes the whole um I feel the purpose of it all gets lost of what we're actually here to do in, 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 in terms of our own evolution and raising consciousness in the quote-unquote ascension process to connect to our original blueprint prior to genetic uh, mutation, so to speak, right? To really engage in that process, you know, and, and, and tuning into ourselves and, and, and doing the self-work to connect to our higher selves and really to the wholeness of it all, to the totality, to, so we are aligned on our individual path and do the work we're here to do so to speak right and sometimes you know i you know these concepts that can be very helpful but they can be also very confusing because it keeps us in the, in the mental realm you know of constantly just trying to understand analyzing and then i mean i see this a lot nowadays especially with the overload of information i mean we're in the age of information with the internet and it's beautiful and it is great to all this information is revealed but at the same time, there's a lot of, you know, questionable ideas out there and, and concepts and just uh, uh, overriding mental activity that connects us from, you know, our our bodies, right? You know, with, especially with computerization technology nowadays, it's, it's actually a distraction from our own inner technology, right? So... You know, where I am at right now, I spend uh, a lot of time in nature. I meditate each morning and, you know, and then I tune into, like, you know, <clears throat> into the wholeness of, you know, through my body, uh, into nature. And, yes, I can tune in, like, what other people might call different dimensions and a higher state of, of being and, 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 and awareness and consciousness and tapping into what may, yeah, you can describe it as fifth-dimensional consciousness or whatnot, but in the end, when I'm really in the state of, of really being and, and tuned into the totality of it all, all these concepts lose their meaning because I just am, right? And that may sound a little bit like actually too age philosophical, but, you know, that's, <clears throat> you know, it's it's the balance. Again, like we need, uh, you know, these concepts and ideas help us to, to put certain things into context and help us understand but let's not forget, you know, um, really to that in the end we will never truly understand through these concepts when it's not really embodied, that knowledge embodied, embodied on an experiential level, right? Like for me, like especially this year, I've seen a big shift in a lot of people and, and, and the collective in general and people waking up more to these higher realities, and I've had experiences, and the way I perceive reality and what I tune into it, some of it is really hard for me to put into words, 
because language by itself is very limited, right? So, <clears throat> like the saying goes, we can point at the moon, but the finger is not the moon, right? So to speak. So, yeah, back to your question. So, in, in the end, I cannot really say much about 12 dimensions, 22 dimensions, because it's, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's not really where I'm at or what I've looked into. And, and when it comes to this concept, I just, I just, stick to the seven density model is similar to like a, you said you have Ted Tom Montag on your show and uh, that kind of um, helps me to put my experience and research into into a good framework uh, hello uh, I, I can't hear you Bernard I'm here Bernard oh okay you were uh, silent for four seconds for some reason okay. so uh, why don't you backtrack five seconds ago you're talking about Tom so Montauk anyway, that, that was round about my 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 answer, <laughs> which probably didn't answer your question, but this is just where I'm at right now, where I'm coming from. Hello. Oh, okay. I put myself off uh, mute there. All right. So that, that's everything. You were finishing up, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Paris I'm Milton, I'm going to try again. Hopefully, I will not hear music when I let you on. But I'm try. I hope so. I close oh, well, everything. I, I can hear you now. Paris A. Milton, you were on the air. Uh, you have uh, some questions. I was talking in the chat, so uh, feel free to uh, ask my guest. Ask away. Thank you so much. Of, uh, of leaders in V. Gates? I forget. I forget what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> I spent a lot of time in Germany in the 80s, probably before you were born, um, doing hair. It was a great time. Um, in any case, I had a psychic moment when I read your bio, and I said, I bet you this guy is going to know about um, Morgellons disease. Maybe he knows Harold Katz, Bella, Black Goo, transhumanism. I was a lucky guest, you know? I guess, it's, I mean, you, you know, you're both from Germany, but that's not why I felt, you know, that you were maybe had a connection or some knowledge about it. But um, I wanted to know, um, you know, what your thoughts are about um, his involvement and your involvement. What is your involvement with um, Morgellons? I've suffered from it for six years. He seems to think uh, it's very easy to cure, but um, I hate to correct him. There's a lot of people who've had it for 30 years uh, and can't get rid of it. Um, and then I had a question about other dimensions as well. Well, um, well, your first question, I'm aware of Harald's, Harald's uh, work. I've watched some of his videos. I've not really, like, to be honest, not um, seen a lot of him, like a couple of his, of his lectures where he also talks about the Margellan disease, what you were just talking about. Oh, okay. And a lot of what he says makes a lot of sense to me. It also correlates with my own research, not necessarily the disease, and I really cannot say more about it because I haven't researched oh. it myself. Okay. But he's definitely on to something, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of especially AI, artificial intelligence, oh. and, 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 and all of that, and uh, from what I've heard, he has been through a little bit of a uh, difficult phase, dealing with some yeah. attacks and whatnot. I heard right, that. but I don't know him personally, and we've never been in personal communication. Well, if you do a Google search, you know, it, it will put your names together somehow, maybe because you talk about a similar um, content or something. Um, yeah, uh, research in intersects, like, you know, correlates yeah. here and there, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I like actually, you know, speaking of a look more into his work, but you know, if, well, whatever I'm into, like there's so much out there, and then you know, just focus on one thing. And right. but you know, I watched. I, th I think I watched. There was the 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 Black Goo AI uh, okay. lecture I saw with him, you know, yeah. from last year or something, and it was it was very revealing, very interesting, and I, I can recommend his work definitely. I've 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 posted it before. I think he's very credible. Um, Absolutely credible and humble. You know what can I say? He doesn't. Uh, he comes off very believable and um, not pretentious. You know, thank God. Because um, yeah. <laughs> and he he's done more for Morgellons than the people that have have been doing the research on it that he's consulted with. You know, mm -hmm. in, in no time at all, he's put it on the map. Thank God. You know, because he's I guess. You know he's brilliant and he's a lot easy, 
he's he's easy to look at, et cetera, whatever. I don't know. I don't I tell you he's very likable. Yeah, he's very German in his approach. You know, I can oh, appreciate that. Charming. <laughs> charming. Everybody, I, well, every woman, I can tell you, we, we hang on every word, you know. <laughs> and he's so humble, too, which is so charming, too, to be so bright and so unpretentious, you know. Yeah. It's very endearing. Um, yeah. I did want to ask you something that I find incredibly frightening and urgent. Um, I have been experience like I I'd never had a, a paranormal moment in my life until I got Morgellons and it did uh-huh. kind of open up my something you know it had probably has changed my DNA so now I have a paranormal like sensitivity or something uh-huh. um, and um, I've been watching battles since I've gotten Morgellons and uh I could probably say I've watched every single day a different kind of battle between different kinds of entities. Uh-huh. They haven't hurt New York yet, but they are getting loud. I have them on video, so I totally can back up what I'm talking about. Um, it's, very, it's very hard to, you know, they're a little bit elusive. They're, they're either terribly slow or terribly fast. But lately they're getting sloppier, so they're easier to spot. I can spot them like in a heartbeat but they're violent and even the new york, the scenery of new york changes and you can hear i mean it's so loud and they've been using these balls i don't know for, for target practice today i saw them reinsert them into the buildings like they were returning them you know which i found i never saw that before so you know we're supplying their their practice you know weapons and are they in our dimension? That's my question. And some of these are absolutely enormous. They also are pushing on our buildings. Uh-huh. Uh, some of them look like like old forties German spies, you know, with the hat and everything and that garb. But they're like they're like the size, the size of you know the Empire State Building. I mean, they could lean against it and push it. I know this sounds crazy, but I just took a video tonight, and they're all verifiable yourself on a live cam network. So it's like anyone can. So you you see them visually, literally. Yes, you see people. You see people hiding in plain sight. You see the weapons. You see exchanges of artillery. You'll see these really odd, like water fireballs coming across um, the Hudson River. You see. I have a rod collection. I'm not talking about Rod Stewart or anything. They're they're like beautiful, beautiful, brilliant rods. I have one sticking into the um, World Trade Center like a hypodermic needle. Like it looks like they're siphoning energy for something. I've taken ball like fireballs. I have recently taken like like a a rapid fire fireball shot, which was just like unbelievably, you know, fast. Um, so I have two versions. One is the normal time and then one I slowed down, but I've never seen ten in a row like that. So people say, oh, that's nothing. That's a helicopter. I think, like, now they can't tell me it's a helicopter anymore. I've been, I've been studying them for six years. They're definitely not helicopters. But they're fighting from the ground, from the, you know, the, the river, from New York City and from above. So they're exchanging artillery in three fashions. And it's not like that, you know, I don't know if they're in another dimension because, like, of course, we're here the next day, you know what I mean? And um, Do you see it as physical manifestations or is it more energetic, like you tap into the higher realms? You will see. I have pictures of New York Crashed. I mean, it looks like the city's been devastated by a terrible war at the end of it all. Or we all look like it's been like rubbed, reduced to Cheerios. We look like just a pile of Cheerios cereal. It's just, it, it's the, and I take pictures of this, you know, there's like a Hall of Fame. You could see people that take pictures of the same view. And you can see the difference of the pictures. It's so strange. It's the same view from the same, you know, it's like one of these tourist type of cameras. They're live streaming videos for tourists to see, you know, what the weather's like, what, you know, what New York City looks like, you know, what 
you know, what Hamburg looks like, you know, what Munich looks like. You could, they're all over the world. You know, you can see the Eiffel Tower, et cetera. Right. And I've, I've seen these wars in other um, in other um, cities. I think they're probably everywhere. But they are every day here. And, like, I wouldn't worry about it, but they seem to be getting to a point where they're, even you see New York City shaking, and if they're in another dimension, I just like feel like they're going to materialize any minute. Can I uh, like? What do you think of them? Their ability to to really do some harm to us and come into our reality and use their their other dimensional, you know, weapons and they're like you know they can like other dimensional technology. Like first of all, I would love to see the, this footage or, or pictures. I'm just kind of curious if you have them online. Okay. But, but on the other end, what I, you know, what I, what I, you know, my idea, like based on my research, is like they can manifest in whatever form they want to, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but what you said, you know, what's interesting, what you said before that they're becoming sloppy or they are kind of upping the game, so to speak, and that I can see that as well in terms of hyperdimensional manipulation or attack, you know, especially, <clears throat> you know. In this day and age, especially over the last year, like I mentioned this before, I see more and more people actually awakening to this hyperdimensional reality and this hyperdimensional manipulation. Like personally, personally, I've been writing about this for for over decades and whatnot. And yeah. back in the days, almost nobody paid attention or got ridiculed and attacked, you know, being called crazy, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But now I see more and more people actually. You know, seeing this manifest in their own lives, they're starting to sincerely question it. So there's a big awakening happen on some level. I'm not saying anything close to collective awakening, but it ties into this transformational process as we're in it, called quote unquote ascension process, right? As we are really rising up. So these hyperdimensional forces, they become um, desperate, literally. You know what I mean? Like, because they're about to lose their quote-unquote food source, as I mentioned before, and they want to keep us on a lot of frequencies, so they're using all kinds of tactics or, you know, hyperdimensional technology to keep us on this lower frequency. You know, in that sense, they also do become sloppy because, in the end, we are more, way more powerful than they, and, and essentially they cannot stop what is uh, what is unfolding. They can just give us a really hard time, so to speak, right? They could, they could push us. They could they could do a Jericho on us. I really swear, like, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't even know the story about Jericho. I knew a song, though, that Joshua fought a battle at Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. And if uh-huh. I, I want to show you the video where they're pushing on the buildings, the buildings are shaking, and I thought tonight, Absolutely, there was two very tall, well-dressed, you know, like 1940s-looking spy types. As tall like men, in, like men in black kind of type. Have you heard of men in? Yes, men I in black? men in black, but I wouldn't necessarily call because some of them are not dressed well, or some of them are animals. Some of them are not human-like, and some uh-huh. of them are not dressed like you know so fashionably. Some are dressed are in uniforms. And there's a guy that that doesn't wear pants on this Hudson River. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Interesting. Him. Like, hey, I'm all. I would love to see the pictures and the footage. You know, I, can I, you put I, it up on the internet at all, or do you have any? any I, way? Want, I need to show it to you at the same moment because if I just send it to you, it's gonna be like, what the hell is she talking about? And I have to outline to you where to focus because it's like. You could focus uh, on 20 things at one time, which is what I usually do, and then I'll turn it on again and see, like, something I never even noticed, you know? And usually uh-huh. I send it to my friend. She doesn't see anything until I point it out to her. So as soon as I point it out, she goes, now I see it, you know? And she goes, oh, I don't see anything, you know? But once I point it out, and I'm talking about things that I find, they're so obvious. Like, I have those, like, ten shooting balls, boom, 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 boom. And I'm huh. saying the booms with them, and they're also making a boom. So it's like, how could you not see that, you know? And then when I was on the phone with her, she goes, oh, of course I saw them, you know? But I slowed it down, I sped it but up. But basically you said, as you said before, you were starting to see these things and tapping into after your own healing process, so to speak. Well, Is that correct? I would, I would love to be able to get better. I, I know this has expanded my consciousness. I don't think it's necessarily what I I would have, you know, traded my health for. 
I would have rather been oblivious and healthy than what, what I'm experiencing now, though it's really interesting. I'm disabled. I don't have friends anymore. Everyone thinks I'm nuts, too. So I got to write a book, you know, so maybe you can help me. <laughs> got to get some credibility because I need to, you know, I need to prove to people I'm not nuts, you know. This is a terrible... No, no, put it out there, write it, do everything, you know what I mean? Just put it out there. Condition. I wouldn't wish it on anyone except the, the aliens that eat humans, you know? And I figured yeah. gallons is probably a seasoning for them or something. I don't know. Right. It's, it's dreadful that they would eat us. But um, So you're saying we're their food source? Is that why they can't be sloppy? Yeah, I mean, they just become desperate because, you know, that's, they're losing control over what they've created, you know, over thousands and thousands of years. Can we right. offer them some chicken or something, like that tastes like us or something? Well, it's like when I talk about food, then it's like, a, I don't know if, if you were listening at the beginning of, of this radio show, um, I talk in terms of uh, not necessarily physical food, but consciousness as food or energy as food, mm-hmm. and they uh, well, especially I, feed off of lower vibrational I emotional loops, you, you know, conflict, I, like, which they create through us all the all the atrocities and the wars out there. Essentially, they are created created through, you know, not necess- uh through um, you know the political uh, whatever governments, but they eat our fear, for example. They eat yeah, fear. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fear is, is yeah. That's what they're trying to fear. Yeah. I'm a source of uh, n- nutrition for them. I'm scared to death. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you know, but I don't know. I mean, it's it's very, and especially when every day there's some sort of new kind of like, you know, army in the sky. I'm like, what are these? Right. You know, what? Well, you know, thing? like as 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 Andrew said before, like, and I agree, fear is ultimately an illusion. So though, but don't buy into the fear tactics. You know, that's how they try to get to us through our own minds. Right? Oh, yeah, I gotta I gotta work on that because uh, I need to take a tranquilizer. My heart's in my throat. I'm just so scared. <laughs> I am so scared. I'm so, I'm like their perfect victim, but I'm trying to get well, the, the most. Best, you know, out. like the best antidote for that is like when you see yourself in the getting into fear state. It also says that you're caught up in your mind. What I mentioned before, this whole intellectual overriding and trying to make sense in your mind, and you're disconnected from your body. And like, yeah, you know, and yeah. like sometimes it really helps to disconnect from like what I said before, from literally all this information, technology, computerization. Oh. Go into nature, get into your body, you know, right. boom, get grounded, get grounded. That's really important, you know, on that note in, in this day and age to really be more grounded in this reality, you know, to stay in our bodies, right? I just to remember want- ourselves to, like, breath work or do any yeah. conscious body-mind practices, any of that that can really, like, hold well, that frequency, that higher frequency that we are now really called to rise up and, and we are... I gotcha, I gotcha. I totally understand you. Um, what I'd like to do, actually, is see how, how you'd feel after you see somebody pushing down, uh, you know, uh, the, the church in Cologne. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, well, I, just as an example, I'm trying to remember something in Munich or Hamburg, and I don't know, we were there one day. I don't remember that much. But um, I want to show you, um, be able to, I'm on Skype, so I can exchange you my Skype name, and I'll give you my um on Facebook name, I have plenty of um, videos there that you can watch. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, go to go to my website. I think the link is on on the radio show veilofreality.com or or bernhardgunther.com. You can contact okay. me through there. I'll and there's you. also a Facebook link. So you know. Okay, I'm yeah. not gonna have the same name either. I have like three different names. I'm not trying to be uh, cute. I'm, it's a long story. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> It's the one was a stage name. I I, I used the uh, one as a stage name. This is just my father's name. Cause he didn't want me to use my real name when I did hair. <laughs> so anyway, whatever. Right on. I'm gonna um I'm gonna look you up and add my name, which is um uh you'll let you'll know it. It's uh, a sparkling water. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah. yeah thank you. Take care. Us. If you want to post those pictures and everything on the uh, Nature of Reality Radio Facebook group, by all means. If you're not a member, just uh, just click join group, and I can approve you for that. That would be great. Nature of Reality. Okay, I'm Nature gonna of Reality that. Radio. That's the name of the Facebook group. Nature, Nature of Reality Radio. Do that right now. Don't hang up on me. I still want to hear the show. Okay. Okay, let's put you on mute. Thank you. All right. So- thanks for calling.
Thank Take you. Take care. Call any time. Bye, Miss. Bye. All right, so just so you know, we have 15 minutes and 35 seconds until the live feed is up. Try to keep the show to two hours. If you need to finish a thought or something, we can go a little past two hours. But um, all the people, if what wants to call in after that, they would have to call in because the live feed will be up in 15 minutes and 25 seconds. So getting back to something you said earlier, Bernard, um, free will and the extent to which you want to try to interfere with other people's lives to, like, wake them up. Uh, This is a very conflicting issue because one could debate and disagree over whether or not it is in uh, the best interest of humanity and whether or not we, the people that are awake, have the right to to, to do something like this. Um, All those uh, sheeple out there, I'm sorry if people take offense to using the word sheeple, but it's just one of those words that sticks. All those people out there who are too paradigmatic, too fearful, and uh, well, too stupid to believe the truth and accept the truth because they can't handle the truth. Um, those people, in a sense, are kind of one of the ultimate barriers to keeping us from ascending into higher consciousness, in a, in a sense. So um, one could debate as to whether or not it is in our best interest to hassle and harass them, to uh, wake them up. Now, I'm not suggesting that we should do to the, the sheeple what that guy in the movie They Live did to his friend who refused to put on the glasses. <laughs> that would be going a little too far. But maybe a little slap in the face and maybe grab them by the shirt and say, wake up out of your trance, dumbass. You're making life miserable for all of us who are awake. And uh, you're actually harming me and all the other people that are awake by being in your trance because you're keeping us from getting out of this prison planet matrix. So wake up. I'm giving you what you deserve. So uh, is that a bad idea? Do you disagree with that or is it not a bad idea? idea to try to hassle and harass the sheeple to wake them up so they stop making our lives miserable. Well, <laughs> I like your uh, thought there. Um, well, personally, I've tried that <laughs> years ago, and it definitely backfired, you know, especially also out of enthusiasm, like, can't you see what's going on? We need to wake up and boom, 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 and push the information on people who were not ready for it or asking for it, and it does tie into free will and the uh, esoteric axiom of, of you cannot give until it's asked for and has to, the asking needs to be sincere or the, it has, doesn't have to be verbal asking but can be it depends on the context of situation on the situation but you know like <clears throat> yes collectively you know because most people far majority are holding on to illusory consensus reality right so we are kind of <laughs> obviously dampened by that but it's not a Lost case because the way I, what I see happening is definitely not, nothing close to a collective awakening, but a certain more splitting, you know, of timeline and reality split. So a certain you know uh, percentage of the population or, or whatnot will uh, ascend to a higher state of being a, a, high, uh, a reality, not in, in you know in terms like New Age, like uh, ascending to another planet or whatnot, or paradise on Earth, whatever. But I see, you know, if, as the polarization is increasing also, like I just posted about it on, on Facebook today, like the bifurcation of time in the sense that, you know, people go out of our lives and we naturally, re, um, you know, <clears throat> um, connect with people who are more on our frequency, you know, and that's, that's where it comes down to its frequency in, in terms of the state of being and awareness and the knowledge and integrated lesson and whatnot. You know that you know creates our the you know our real reality and the people we are surrounded with, so to speak, right? But in terms of pushing information on others and forcing them to wake up, that that actually I see feeds totally, pun intended, no pun intended, into the agenda, because in the end it's a manipulation. Right, you're manipulating people against their will, so it's a free will um, <clears throat> infringement. And and unfortunately, like I learned a hard lesson myself as well. You got to accept free will, even if it's their free will to um, believe in lies and illusion, so to speak. And and this, uh, regardless of their well-meaning intentions, you know, I mean, like for years I've been talking out, like what I said before about the basic, you know, government setup and the illusion of uh, statism and how much suffering and and atrocities that actually create regardless of whoever is in charge right of this whole need to follow leader this whole stockholm syndrome that's really what it is right but i know like you cannot like you can make your arguments as sound and logical if somebody's not ready to hear it 
they're not going to, to take it in. It's classic cognitive dissonance, because if they would acknowledge one little thing, it would happen, open up a can of worms, and they would need to reflect on themselves their whole life, possibly considering that they have been living a lie all their life long, and and then the you know question of career, public image, what are going my neighbors, my family, my friends think if I also speak out about these things. So it's almost like a unconscious self defense mechanism. What happens there? You know what we can do. What I feel is spread seeds of awareness. You know that's all I do. I mean, I have my work, I have my blog, films, and Facebook, and I just put out information on there. You know, and then similar my process like. I, I came to this, and I don't know, maybe you can relate to that and other listeners as well. The way I came to all this, uh, uh, in my own awakening process, having taken the red pill and whatnot, was through my own effort, my own suffering, and me really like, I need to figure it, like I said before, figure, I want to understand. I want to understand myself, understand the world. It's, it came uh, from my own inner soul calling. It was never somebody like, you know, <clears throat> telling me like, this is that and this is that, you know, like, I would have probably rejected it, you know, and also considering we're like, what, 7 billion people on this planet, there are vast different levels of, of being and consciousness, and, you know, who am I to judge what another person's deeper soul lesson is, what they need to experience, you know, even from the perspective of STS versus STO, on a soul perspective, I feel even to see that some souls are destined for the STS path, uh, path, the dark path. It's just what their soul needs to experience on that level right now. And there's, from a high level, there's no judgment. That's why evil has its own free will. And evil on this level will never be eradicated. It's you know, it's not even the word evil. I don't really like it. Let's talk service to 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 self, so to speak, right? Because that is the duality we live in, right? It's not going to go away. The only way is to transcend it, to ascend to a higher state, and it's not going to happen for everyone on this planet. And the best way we help this world is, again, it goes beyond uh, spreading in information. You know, we can, like I see, there's so much people in, in all this conspiracy scene, alternative media, like spread information and knowledge and intellectual stuff, and it's all fine and good to a degree, but it really comes down to our own internal process of embodiment and ascension process of connecting to our original blueprint, you know, to really hold this higher frequency. And that frequency affects reality. That's how we change reality. It's how we also affect others. On that, you know, this, is, this goes beyond pu um, pushing information or trying to convince other people through logical discourse, right? It's really like how our frequency affects the planet and as cheesy as it may sound or just bring it to the point it really comes down to love and the true meaning of the word right not to project love or send love to world leaders and the world and you know that's also a new age fallacy in a sense it's just holding that frequency and like sometimes we need to meet, meet people where they're at and um, I learned a lot from you know I've been working as a body worker for 15 years and now also holistic coaching I've worked on thousands of people, and I learned so much from working with people from all walks of life. And, you know, what I've, the biggest lesson I've learned is really to meet people where they're at, you know. I know, like, sometimes if people are going on, goes you know, more into, like, hyperdimensional stuff, entity attachment, interference, but where they're at, they cannot receive this. They cannot go there. It would just harm them even more. So there's a different approach, you know what I mean, just uh, working with basic psychology, you know what I mean, which also helps to kind <clears> of <throat> um, lessen the interference and whatnot. So everybody has, you know, <clears throat> um, their own path in a sense, right, on, on a soul level. And what works for one may not work for another. I know, for example, what has worked for me and what, you know, in my own personal process now, and no, this is not necessarily what works for others. You know, the path I'm on, which I also feel I've never really chosen consciously, it was just like, you know, I feel my mission profile, which I've finally remembered and aligned myself to. Like, I never, you know, if you've told me 10, 12 years ago I would be doing what I'm doing now, I would have laughed in your face, right? So, again, I think there's, there's, there's a higher purpose in uh, divine will and natural process, and, and the awakening has to happen in a sense naturally. We cannot do it for another. We cannot convince them. Everybody needs to come to this understanding for themselves. And the best we can do is, you know, live by example as an inspiration, not only in terms of spreading knowledge and information, 
but you know being the change we want to see like really like coming more from this embodied heart space you know and and when i mean heart space again i don't mean the new age of just being you know always nice and positive because sometimes you gotta you know make your boundaries clear call a spade a spade right um but really like understanding it how we uh, affect reality and and others in terms of frequency, right? Which again goes back to this this embodiment process, which is a lot of my work is about, in context of of the evolution of consciousness. Thank you, and uh, we've got five minutes left on the live feed, so I guess I'll uh, finish up by giving you the chance to um, uh, talk about some of the um, specific uh, holistic coaching and integrative body work that you are. Uh, concerned with for all the people that want to use you as someone to uh, uh, to help them with their healing and coaching and such. Uh, give us a quick recap of what you do. Uh, I'll let you make a sales pitch out of this if you want your people <laughs> to pay you for, for, for your help. So uh, go right ahead. Um, well, body work, you know, I prefer being like it. the whole, I mean, I've been body work for 15 years. So again, like obviously body work is in person. I have my own practice here in, in, in studio in Topanga County in California and using various modalities from deep tissue to Esla massage to craniosacral, polarity, energy work, Thai yoga, anything like, you know, it's very intuitive and however work is very specific to each person. And just helping people like, you know, not only just with muscle tension, whatever, but like deeper stuff that's trauma or, you know, that is stuck in the body and help them to integrate that and process it and I don't see myself as a healer. I just tap into the body intelligence of the person I'm working on, and I know, you know, opening up certain pathways and let the energy flow. And then the, the body knows. The body is always striving, uh, striving towards wholeness and healing. If we give it the space, you know what I mean, to calm the body down. Especially in this day and age, most people, you know, modern civilization. Most people run unconsciously, constantly on fight and flight. They are just always stressed out. They cannot, the whole body system, body mind system, just overloaded, right? So if, if that body work can help to kind of get grounded and, and, and let things emerge in, in terms of healing process. Now, holistic coaching, as I call it, like that came out of like so, so many people have contacted me over the years, asked me questions and really personal uh <clears throat> inquiries and be it over facebook and email and it's, for me it's first of all it's overwhelming to respond to to all the emails and then also the limitation to to communication over over chat or email because it right away again puts people in the mind into their minds and so much can be misinterpreted so at one point people started asking me if i do skype sessions you know, so I offer these holistic coaching Skype sessions for people who cannot come to me, and I've done them with people all over the world. And it's uh, talking to them, working them face to face. You know, it gives me, you know, very much also an intuitive impression of what's going on with them, and and really tuning into where they are at. And them talking to me face to face really, you know, helps you to really, you know, tune into more uh, other things that I can see that's going on with them and then give them feedback on them. And then I'm not the person who wants to tell people what they should do or shouldn't do. You know, my goal is really to help people to tune into their own intuitive guidance system, which we all have, but we have lost that sensitivity, right? Which also ties in. That's why we always, people look for outside guidance and authority against government, somebody lead the way because we have disconnected and forgot our own guidance system, Right. And uh, again, that goes back to this, this process of embodiment to truly tune in into, into our body, perceiving the world through the body and how we are being helped and guided if we can, you know, tap into that basically. So holistic, I mean, is basically just looking at it from our perspective, you know, be it basic psychology of basic shadow work, young know, in psychology, but I also, you know, childhood wounding, but there are also limitations to only look at it psychologically. You know, I feel a lot of psychological um, labels, so to speak, are just, I'm not a big fan of them. And a lot of it may be just manifestations of hyperdimensional interference, you know, psychic attacks, entity attachments, which uh, people may be dealing with, which I can relate to very much, you know. So, again, it's very, it depends on each person, right? But, you know, I'm just... What I share is, you know, based on 
what I've learned and my experiences and then using my talents and gifts to help others wherever they are at, right? And also, um, actually, this year in May, uh, my good uh, Peruvian friend of mine, we're going to have a, a retreat in Peru in the high jungle nine days where we'll go deeper uh, into this embodiment process, you know, using just body-mind techniques and uh, basic yoga, qigong, and he's a sound healer, and also giving some workshops, interactive workshops about the ascension process, embodiment process, about hyperdimensional realities, about the traps of awakening and spiritual bypassing and, you know, how to tune into your own guidance system, how to tr how true reality creation works in alignment with your true soul purpose in all of that. So we're really looking forward to um, to that retreat where you really be immersed, you know, with like-minded people in person, because that's what I realized too, like so speak, uh, talking on Facebook to people or in my coaching sessions from all over the world, everybody, you know, I have a great network and we're all connected, but everybody is kind of alone by themselves in front of the computer. So I feel it's really important to, you know, disconnect from the modern life distractions, get out of the city frequencies, the EMF radiation and pollution and, and, and whatnot, and, you know, uh, be in nature, you know, work, do this work together where we can help each other. So that's, for example, the intention. We have this retreat and we hope to do this more often. And uh, more information about that is also on, on both of my websites. Have fun down Hello? in South America. So, yeah, it took a while for the mute button to mute there. But uh, anyway, the um, life feed is up. I guess I'll bring this show to an end and I'll do that by telling you what is the most emotional part of every single show for me and probably maybe a lot of my guests do, but uh, made a little gig out of this and uh, it's also made uh, my show impartial and this is the way I do it. But uh, Bernard, I loved having you on. You are a fascinating individual. You cover a lot of things about the nature of reality, which is what my show, of course, seeks to do. And I have no doubt that I could certainly do another show with you, but one of my goals with this radio show that I decided when I first started doing this was to try to get as many different guests on my show as possible before I give any one specific guest double dips because I felt that was the fairest, most impartial, and most informative way to do a radio show that seeks to expose the nature of reality. So um, that does mean I probably will not be asking you to come on my show again, but that's only because I need to give thousands of other fascinating individuals the chance to have some glory on my radio show. But I promise you I will make sure that this interview that we did, it does get spread far and wide. I'll upload it to YouTube. I will upload it to social networks. And by all means, I do encourage people that were listening to this to get into your um, get into your uh, healing, whatever they, that, that you do, that you do over Skype and such, that um, they can, I'm sure that they could definitely get some benefit from that hearing what you had to say. This was great. Loved having you on, and I wish you the uh, best of luck with all your future endeavors. Thank you very much, Andrew. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Take care now. Later. Take care. Bye. Namaste. Bye. Folks, that is the end of this show. Jordan Maxwell will be the guest tomorrow, only an hour show from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern. Finish off the uh, second hour with him. Probably talk a lot of things about law and such, among other things. Didn't really talk about that in the first interview. So Jordan Maxwell tomorrow. Namaste, everybody. This is your host, Andrew Fisher, signing off. Enjoy the rest of your trek throughout Infinite Consciousness.